finished the last presentation with this slide in which we introduced these new connectives, this Indian TP of conjunction, the V of disjunction, and the double-headed arrow of mutual implication, by definition in terms of these two primitive connections of negation and implication. And on the basis of the way in which those new connectives were defined, I suggested that the WIF alpha mutual implication beta could itself be defined as two conjoined whiffs, alpha implies beta and beta implies alpha. Now mutual implication I set up here means if we have mut uh, alpha mutually implies beta it means in English uh, alpha if and only if beta. Now if and only if is not a phrase that occurs that often in normal English and it may take a little while to think about what it actually means but this gives us an easy way to understand what it actually means alpha if and only if beta means alpha implies beta and beta implies alpha so let's just recap on what we have so far as elements of our propositional calculus. First of all, we have a vocabulary, a vocabulary consisting of the uppercase letters of the English alphabet, perhaps augmented by subscripts as necessary to give us a countable number, an infinite number, a countable infinite number of symbols. We also have, by way of symbols, our left hand and our right hand parentheses and in addition we have our two primitive connectives of negation and implication augmented by three further connectives which we've introduced by definition conjunction disjunction and mutual implication and we have a set of rules for forming strings of these symbols which are meaningful in our language. These are our formation rules and in addition to our formation rules, the formation rules that we forgive my writing yet again, the formation rules that we defined initially we have other rules for dropping parentheses without thereby incurring any liability to ambiguity. What else do we have? We have our inference rule. Our inference rule of modus ponens. Now together we're going to call these three elements of the calculus our vocabulary here, our vocabulary of symbols, our formation rules, and our inference rule of modus ponens. Together, we're going to term those our language. And generally, a language in logic comprises a set of symbols, a countable set of symbols, a set of formation rules, and one or more inference rules. Now what does this language enable us to do? Well as we described it enables us to write lists of whiffs and whiffs remember are strings of these symbols concatenated in accordance with the formation rules giving us meaningful expressions. Whiffs are meaningful expressions in our language and our language enables us to do this. It enables us to write rules or make a list, we can go on, and where we have some whiffs already written down, then by our inference rule of modus ponens, we are then permitted to write, if we're able, depending on what these whiffs that we already have in the list happen to be, we're permitted to write others. Now, writing lists of whiffs is all very well, 
but uh, it isn't much use. It's not what you came to study logic for. You didn't uh, take up the study of logic in order to be able to write down lists of expressions. So we're going to give these lists of expressions some meaning. And we've already hinted at how that might be done, or how we're going to proceed to do that by labeling these uh, this inference rule, this modus ponens, an inference rule. Inference is rather suggestive. And by the names, the English equivalent names that we've associated with these connectives, negation, implication, conjunction, disjunction, and mutual implication. Now what I'm going to say here is that where we write down lists of whiffs in accordance with the sorts of guidelines we've set out so far, that is writing out some whiffs initially and then any whiffs that can be subsequently written by applications of this rule modus ponens, we're going to say that these initial whiffs, these initial whiffs, which we might describe as assumptions, that have been written. Those initial whiffs imply these whiffs that we subsequently write, and that may go on by modus ponens. These, these are implications of our assumptions based on the application of the rule of modus ponens. These are assumptions. We're going to call these consequences. Actually, maybe I'll just use a darker green to make that a little more visible. Consequences. Consequen. My writing really is terrible. And we're going to say that these consequences are derived from our assumptions by multiple applications of our inference rule. So far we've got just one inference rule, the inference rule of modus ponens, but we are going to define some additional inference rules as we evolve uh, propositional calculus. Now all this is strictly formal and constitutes what we describe as the syntax of a propositional calculus. Syntax simply has to do with, as it were, grammar, with formation rules, of vocabulary, uh, inference rules, and how we are enabled to write down these sets of whiffs. Now, what I'm going to say is, on the basis of the suggestive language whereby we've termed these whiffs that are initially written down assumptions, and these whiffs which are written down subsequently by application of MP as consequences, and we've said that assumptions imply consequences, we're going to introduce a semantics. And and the semantics of uh, propositional calculus has to do with the association of truth with these whiffs in our lists. And what we're going to say is that, and what we're going to show in fact, is that if the assumptions are these whiffs, one, two, and three, in this case, as I've written down here, whatever they happen to be, if those whiffs have associated with them a truth value of true, that is, if they're true, then uh, inference rule of modus ponens is what we call truth-preserving, uh, which means that all of these whiffs, which follow from the assumptions, or consequences of the assumptions, on the basis of an application of modus ponens, are themselves true. So while well, the syntax of propositional calculus have to do with defining what a whiff is and writing lists of them, the semantics have to do with the infusions 
of truth, the association of truth, truth. And we'll say that if truth infuses the assumptions, then it infuses also the consequences. And that's semantics. And we're going on to look in more detail at the semantics and these infusions of truth and how truth is conveyed down this list in the next presentation. Music